Hello to our listeners. Welcome to Sofa Fest Oriental Dance Interview, where we bring you closer to different dance artists. Sofa Fest is an international Middle Eastern dance festival located in Estonia on a small, beautiful island called Sarema. My name is Jane Gayo, head organizer of this festival, and I will be your host today. Our today's guest is one of the most known tribal fusion dance artists in the whole world. She is the mastermind behind many amazing dance projects, including tribal festival in Kazakhstan. But now she has settled down in our small, beautiful country, Estonia. Welcome to Sofa Fest interview, Olga Meos. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for being <laughs> How is the settling into Estonia going? Are you adapting well? Yes, I'm trying to adapt. I think I this my country for my mood and so because mm -hmm. I'm kind of it's that looks like but I'm kind of introvert and I need my space, my time to be alone some of the time and the perfect place we found in the middle of the forest and mm -hmm. we have a small country named Kelvinge and it's so nice because the sea is not so far away and I'm so enjoying of the nature. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I lived in Hong Kong before so it's a wow. maximum <laughs> contrast like the jungles <laughs> and now it's forests. Uh, I saw the deers there and it's, it's so much amazing. I really enjoy this country. I'm trying to learn the language. It's mm -hmm. not so difficult by the way, okay. but yeah, I'm trying, but I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the nature is the, something that pulls you into the, into the countryside and uh, so you can have a bit more freedom. I guess also you get your inspiration more from the nature. Yes, of course. Once uh, we have kind of birthday dance party with my friend from Russia and I dance right in the forest. The forest start and I put my computer and connect it through the phone internet and I did performance in the forest. Wow. And she said, oh wow, it was so nice <laughs> present. So yes, it inspired me a lot and mm -hmm. amazing. I just, I think I'm a nature girl and I really love that uh, not so many people around mm -hmm. me if I want to rest or if I want to be at home. Mm -hmm. But I love, you know, massive things too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm really happy that you found something for yourself in our small country. So let's go into the dance topic now. Do you remember when did you first saw or heard tribal fusion style or oriental style? Tribal fusion or oriental? Both. Or both. <laughs> Which one was first? <laughs> uh, the first was oriental and it was many years ago. I think it was uh, so for now 2021. 2020. I'm 31 and then started to do my belly dance. I think I was 12 or 13, so I was a teenager. Uh, I actually didn't choose that because I go to kind of modern class, but my teacher started to learn belly dance, classic mark shark, and she was in Egypt. And uh, yeah, we start from really old school, you know, belly dance with the big cues, you know, <laughs> Turkish style with the uh, she could dim, she could dim this music. I think like all around the world, belly dancers who dance in many years yeah. are the same way. <laughs> and the tribal fusion, I saw, of course, when YouTube started to explode in the internet, mm -hmm. and Rachel Price, Lily James, Ariella, and all just, you know, I just saw it like, okay, that's something interesting, and I started mm -hmm. to study it. It was the same way, like in our part of the world, how to mm -hmm. know it. So I think, yeah. Uh, but I'm not remember, I think 14 years ago, 13, I'm not remember where it started. <laughs> so many years. <laughs> okay, but do you remember your first Tribal Fusion dance class? Dance class was Tribal Fusion, I started mm -hmm. to do myself because okay. I already teach the belly dance classes myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to guess how it should be, maybe. And of course, I'm doing something, trying to copy belly dance technique and trying to show it to my students. But I remember first real tribal fusion class started from Cano Lido. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Russia at that time and I was so much happy because my real tribal fusion starts from ballet dance superstar teacher and it was like yes and but it was in Moscow I need to travel from Kazakhstan four hours of flight to go to the Moscow and mm -hmm. it was so much expensive at that time and like okay I got in this festival and this festival was big so mm -hmm. I catch some different workshops but I remember it was Camelito and my eyes was like <laughs> Huge! Wow, it's so cool. I remember this moment, every moment I remember. So you didn't have anybody teaching in your area where you lived back then? Nobody? Uh, no, no, we have uh, good dancers there. I um, remember my friends, they trying to dance to Tribal Fusion. Mm -hmm. They try to guess how to dance mm -hmm. it. And of course, in our community, some of the girls try to follow the Tribal Fusion dance. But nobody teaching uh, because nobody knows how to teach. Mm -hmm. And YouTube, we found only the videos of dancing, not uh, training videos or not mm -hmm. like a teacher training. You now you can study teacher training online. So before we just try to find something mm -hmm. to know any information, and nobody knows that, of course. Mm -hmm. And when I start to travel, so another girl starts to travel, and they teach like approximate the same way, mm -hmm. but. Kazakhstan is huge, it's not like in Estonia, <laughs> it's almost like full Europe, so our different cities are really far away, so we're yeah. trying to connect mm -hmm. different ballet dance uh, festivals, mm -hmm. yes, and we start to create our small, small, really pretty community. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah back in the days it wasn't that easy that you just go online you you get a uh, your papers you become a teacher and voila you know <laughs> you had yes. to work harder to to see to research all of it so when you started doing tribal fusion during the beginning years you also started your own tribal pro dance group could you compare now the times when you started it to the time to right now where you are at the current moment what are the differences uh the difference between because i was there in kazakhstan and i was with tribal pro maybe six or seven years and now they uh existing without me mm -hmm. i mean without me i'm just still traveling there organizing mm -hmm. festivals but without my teaching there they exist in like four or five years and the difference between so i was only one teacher there before mm -hmm. before and okay you name like tribal pro it's not mm -hmm. professionals it's actually productions but <laughs> kind of tribal production but everyone thought that it was a professional it's production <laughs> okay. but we tried professional and yes and i started to move from astana it was a capital in kazakhstan now it's named nur sultan Mm -hmm. I moved to another city in Kazakhstan and my students should be teachers because mm -hmm. I'm not be able to teach in this city mm -hmm. and because of moving in Kazakhstan inside I have a lot of um, teachers there so they grow in with me as a teachers because mm -hmm. say, okay we have a lot of students and now sorry but i'm moving so yeah. maybe you want to teach <laughs> and yes that's how it's happening now i think we have like um, 15 teachers in kazakhstan mm -hmm. named tribal pro and i'm so proud of them mm -hmm. i don't have any struggle rules how they need to teach they not following my style of teaching i think kind of freedom uh mm -hmm. because tribal pro was just my name before mm -hmm. now it's like a dance family with that, with different styles with different styles of teaching with different styles of dancing and i think we, we name us and we realized us as a dance family more than just mm -hmm. my big project no it's not like that mm -hmm. so tribal pro makes not only me tribal pro made it by all of us mm -hmm. all of my friends and teachers yeah if somebody would search now from youtube tribal pro it's amazing what videos you can find there it's mind-blowing just and i think everybody who has seen those videos they can say that they are very eye-catching very unique it's not something you see every day you know so if you, Thank you. <laughs> i think my girls really 
will be happy to listen to that. Oh, my heart is melting as a mom. <laughs> But but it's true because we normally see at dance school we see that the students are very similar to their teacher. It is like this, but because you are already so diverse as a dancer, it's super nice to see that all the students they they go in their own directions to discover the world, and it's really like if you want to see dance performances that are outside from the box go see those like they they are exactly that you you can't imagine what you can find there so if you are making a, a solo choreography tell me what is the ratio in terms of technique emotion show effect and storyline i'm trying to do all of it and of course you like okay catch it <laughs> if you really reach that goal to make everything mm -hmm. But it's really hard to process, depends on which, what kind of festival I was or what mm -hmm. kind of festival now I'm dancing because uh, if you will search also in YouTube video She Theatre, mm -hmm. we kind of dance theatre all about the woman. I'm trying to do my more storytelling about mm -hmm. body, um, feeling my body, mm -hmm. feeling my soul as a woman and uh but not always i make this goal and i'm don't, not so often to uh follow this approach because mm -hmm. sometimes i just want to make it fun and dancing because mm -hmm. dancing with a hookah is just you know skills uh not so much about storytelling but kind of i can do this and i can do this and da -da 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 -da. yes of course mm -hmm. i think i'm enjoying different ways mm -hmm. and i'm not choosing only one way i'm trying to make my dance life different and I'm mm, trying to be maybe in the middle or kind of you know traveling between these parts about mm -hmm. storytelling technique and shows and expression or emotions but all my dances I, I'm really sure that they full of emotions mm -hmm. because I'm just love to dance of course I love that they are I'm really love to be on the stage i really love this atmosphere so of course it makes me so much emotional and yeah i feel like something new in my dancing all the time i mean inside in my mind in my soul not about, about technique i think i found it like new emotion every time mm -hmm. when i'm performing mm -hmm. it's so much connected and kind of uh, it's not should be in routine and not should be a, a part or a kind of percentage of something. Mm -hmm. I think it's always okay, more emotions here, <laughs> like a big soup. And sometimes you put more emotions and less technique. And maybe next time you can do different soup, mm -hmm. so different cocktails. Uh, what I noticed at your videos was that you always have some kind of title to the performance. I think this is something that we don't see that much anymore like when there's somebody performing at a festival they say here is that person performing but then maybe sometimes they say the name of the song if it's inspired from that but normally we don't see if there's some kind of a theme or some kind of story behind it but your dances most of them they have some kind of a, a, a title you know, like it is a story that you're going to tell to the audience. Uh, for, uh, I want to explain why it's happening, because it's happening not only because of me, because I'm really bad to create in the titles or the topics of the show or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, how to name it? I'm like, no, it's sometimes it's really hard to do that. But mm -hmm. it's really popular in uh, Russia. It starts mm -hmm. in Russia to name the festival shows like uh, Zodiac, and we have Pisces, mm -hmm. uh, Eo, and different uh, like roles. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, dancing where I perform on these festivals, they named my dance like, okay, now the Ottoman Empire mm -hmm. because of that. So the famous video that 3 million views it named Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. because the organizers suggest different topics and like you need something 
from the past i mean something mm -hmm. name or to show like something past and ethnic style and like mm, i saw one movie and i saw one really interesting thing about ottoman empire and also i found really interesting turkish music so okay ottoman empire mm -hmm. so that's happened like this because a lot of festivals happening and the shows mostly with the topic and the mm -hmm. team them yes mm -hmm. and with different roles that's okay. why you can find a lot of them <laughs> okay. oh, yes and the music was right because samsara dance mm -hmm. uh, was created because the music name samsara that's why it's happening so different yeah but mostly because of the shows named and they have different okay. roles okay I think I remember something uh, from the past. I think in the Infusion Festival in Tallinn, they had one year also this kind of uh, magical places or something. And yeah. they, they had also this performance, which was really fun to look at. It's very different that you can see the, the creation from the artist about related to some certain place. But do you then make all every time a new choreography for a festival if they ask you this i'm i'm a big fan to make it all the time new choreographies that's okay. why it's, I, for me it's really easy to do that's why i put three choreographies on our youtube channel like mm -hmm. okay cross dance it because mm -hmm. i feel really free to make it over and over again i think that's kind of my skill <laughs> my super <laughs> skill and i feel a lot of inspiration to create it and i can do that of course when i Okay, I'm tired. Maybe I will stop, but yeah, I feel that I can do that. And okay. it's really interesting to find, okay, new music, and I'm a big fan of music, so okay, new music. I don't want to dance this song anymore, I want to dance with this song. And like, okay, let's go. And I, I really enjoy to creating choreographies okay. a lot. Yeah, you're, you're very lucky in that way. I couldn't imagine that, especially you, you go to so many festivals all the time and to create all the time a new choreography it's it's a lot of work for me like if i would have to do this so you really you have a superpower for sure in that <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of performing uh, do you have any pre performance uh, ritual or how do you do your stage performance stage uh, rehearsals do you have something special uh, I'm trying to note if I have performance during the festivals, of course, I know sometimes it's happening with my belly uh, when I eat something mm -hmm. unusual or I know because it can happen in different country because, mm -hmm. you know, you, it's not your cuisine, it's not your mm -hmm. food, so maybe you eat something different. That's why I take my protein bars, which I take from my country, <laughs> just in case with my belly everything will be okay because mm -hmm. you know that feeling when you're dancing and your belly it's not the best condition. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm of course from the morning I start to eat in normal food what I used to eat. Mm -hmm. And of course if I have workshop in the beginning of the day, I don't need any stretching or warm up because I'm already doing that on the workshop. And I'm really ready to dance that day. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have something, I have performance in the evening and the uh, first part of the day is free. Of course, I'm doing a uh, different stretch and dancing or rehearsal my solo or group mm -hmm. choreography. I'm doing some uh, gymnastic exercises. So mm -hmm. try to stretch my body to be prepared for the performance. That's happening so many times uh, when I was in the backstage, everyone uh, may, doing the makeup and make the crowns or costumes, but they was so cold to mm -hmm. go on the stage. So I'm trying to exist because I know that it can be dangerous. I never have something bad after performance, no, in no injuries, no hurts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I'm trying just before coming on the stage, some maybe a little warm up, maybe just some moves, maybe dancing more. I kind of ritual, not like plan, plan how many minutes I need to do mm -hmm. that, but I'm trying to never stop before I'm going on the stage, never freeze, like I'm afraid. I'm trying to do something mm -hmm. and dancing, of course, mm -hmm. and rehearse, rehearse all the time. <laughs> So you do listen to your performance music before you go on the stage? Yes, of course. I'm doing. I'm usually doing makeup and with uh, headphones. I'm trying okay. to listen to my music. 
Of course. Maybe I know sometimes it looks like she don't want to speak with us. No, I can. <laughs> but you know, when you're speaking a lot of time with the dancers and you're not concentrate on your music, maybe you can forget some accent because mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the I'm not only dancing choreography, sometimes I'm dancing improvisation. Mm -hmm. So I know when I need to remember this to be to make my music inside my mind when I go on the stage. So of course, I'm like okay, listen and do makeup. So yeah, and then come back to discussing with my friends. Mm -hmm. I love backstage too. <laughs> Yeah, it's like getting into your own element, you're focusing on the performance, not like oh. that I go talk uh, with some girls about uh, after party and then, ah, oh, now it's my turn, okay, I go now on stage, you know, so yes. it's, it's going into the element, preparing yourself mentally and physically to go and do the best that you can do, you know. So yeah. I, I agree with you. No, no chit chatting behind the stage, you know. <laughs> yes. So you said that you love music, and from the performances we can see you use very big variety of music. You don't use some certain genre. You do also classical music. So, but what do you listen to on your free time? Do you have some good music for cleaning your house? What, what do you normally listen? I think all my life now it's a kind of collecting good music mm -hmm. because the music is so much impo important to be productive when you're drilling, when you mm -hmm. do practice because you know uh, I know that a kind of discoveries uh, opened about how music reacts in our blood and uh, mm -hmm. like BPM so it's so much connecting that's why when I have free time and I'm cooking Mm -hmm. Usually, I'm, for now, maybe some years ago, maybe I listen to music. I think for now, I'm always always looking YouTube videos about something, about dance, about physically, about medicine. So for now, I don't remember my free time with music. Mm -hmm. But if I'm running, for example, in the forest mm -hmm. <laughs> or close to that, I'm listening to music and I'm trying to always save for the playlist for the future, for example, or mm -hmm. save like for drills playlist or for pleasure mm -hmm. or for stretching or mm -hmm. for, I don't know, riding in the car. So I have different playlists or mm -hmm. for solo <laughs> maybe <laughs> next time. So I'm trying to collect all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not listening until the end, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying listen mm -hmm. but for example if I have the goal like I need to dance with the classic music like Vivaldi uh, I I just listen this hours and hours again to try and to because it's super different and I'm trying to catch the mood the, mm -hmm. the bad volume of it and yeah it takes time to just listening over and over again Mm -hmm. And also I created my, I start to create it really amateur level, my music and mm -hmm. I'm trying to listen uh, different music now with a little bit, you know, kind of terminator view like, okay, here's the beginning, here's this beat and how many levels they put in the electro music. And I'm trying to understand the musicality through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really helps me to work on my music too. I created like five or six songs. It's not enough and I'm still working on it. But with listening, I think I drill in my skill of uh, kind of musicality, understanding mm -hmm. the taste of musicality, not mm -hmm. just this one. Yeah, so it is very important to understand what music are you dancing to. It's not just a background sound for yeah. your dancing, it's something that needs to go together. So I think when you make your own music, you, you know it so well, you know every little detail. So when do, when can we see you perform to your own music? <laughs> uh, it's already on the YouTube, you can find on the Bible Massive for the first time and perform with two of my tracks because it was wow. combined, yes. Because wow. it was small. Uh, you know, you know, it's interesting feeling because everyone, oh, you know, every uh, every kind of accent. But on the stage, sometimes I have a small, small part of improvisation. Mm -hmm. And on the stage, I'm not feeling that this music was mine. I think, oh, that should be sound. But, oh, no, it wasn't the previous one part. And like, oh, my God, 
how how it's possible i think uh, when you're dancing mm -hmm. you're not so much focusing up uh, all the time on the you know all the accents maybe with an int intuitive way you know where mm -hmm. it is but on the stage when i performed with my music i forgot that it was mine like okay interesting <laughs> feelings <laughs> I don't know any other dancer who has performed uh, to her own music. Normally it's like whether you're a dancer or a composer, but you are both. Back to your regular life, you said you go running. Is there something else you do for working out besides dancing? Yes, I do run. Uh, I, I did before in... Um, fitness uh, fitness room yeah mm -hmm. and uh, now i have the nature so i really and i have really nice winter because in estonia this winter was amazing <laughs> i can take all my clothes and then just run because in uh, kazakhstan it's impossible so much snow and minus 35 mm. celsius so now here it's amazing so i'm running 365 years in year. I'm not a big fan of running. I love to do my run maybe two times per week, mm -hmm. uh, 45, 50, maybe 60 minutes. Just simple and listening, of course, the music and maybe YouTube video again about psychology. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to spend this time productive to listen something new or speaking with my mom. So it's so nice that I, before I didn't like the run because it was okay, you should run, it should be mm -hmm. boring. So I create my running not boring, so mm -hmm. I'm enjoying all that. And my regular practice, I don't have regular regular because for example, yesterday I had two workshop and it was kind of drills workshop and my body is like, no, today we are not moving. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm trying to be not struggle in with my schedule. But I'm trying, okay, I feel that my body rested enough. I can run today, I can do stretching, but I'm not, I don't have any schedule of that. So mm -hmm. I have schedule of my workshops mm -hmm. and I'm trying to maybe do something between, but not be super tired because mm -hmm. I need to save my body for this. But I'm working hard, of course. I'm not like, okay, just a little bit stretching. No, it should be like super crazy drill. <laughs> I actually have a confession to make. I tried one of your videos that you have in YouTube. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a combination class. And I did the workout and already during the workout, I was feeling like, okay, this is already too much for me. And it's just the work, <laughs> like the warm up, you know? And once I got into the combinations, I'm not a tribal fusion dancer, so for me, it was uh, both difficult mentally and physically because my mind couldn't understand that, okay, you need to move that, 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 and all at the same time. So, so yeah. It's possible, just practice. <laughs> I promise. Of course, I have beginners group in Kazakhstan and uh, sometimes I do, if I have the workshop somewhere and they prepare me Olga, it will be a super beginner level. I, okay, no problem. <laughs> but they also dine, but they dine in their way. So yeah, I, I can do that. But yeah, my, my drills, I'm trying to uh, combine for different levels. Like if you take this video two, three years ago, because it will be still on YouTube, maybe you can do it later. Yeah, so I'm always saying, uh, don't be a hero. Try to make, take something mm -hmm. and just, if you got it, don't rush with teacher too. That's why I have so many problems during my ballet dance class. Like I'm trying to take everything, like, okay, I need everything right now mm -hmm. on my body. And I'm trying to be like, I just take just a little bit, put in my body, save it. And maybe mm -hmm. I will add something more later. So mm -hmm. that kind of education. Yeah, I think it's very good uh, practice for anybody, no matter what style you dance, because it's a lot of body coordination, uh, a lot of mental work and remembering all of the details that you have to do. Like in one second, you had like five different movements, you know, like you need to remember all of that. And of course, a dance is not one second. It's at yeah. least three minutes normally. Yeah. So there's uh, thousands of elements that you need to 
remember. So I agree with you that it takes time and practice to yeah. to get it up, up, up all the time. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if uh, any of you want to go check uh, Olga's uh, classes, you can go check her out in Instagram and also in YouTube. She has some classes available, so you can try it out and then or just contact her and see if she goes to some festival close to you so you can see her in person. Let's go now back to the your country. You mentioned before also that you do you do have a festival and you travel because of your festival. What is the main focus of it? The main focus on our festival it's Sometimes they do in more teachers, like five um, more close teacher, and like one of uh, the teacher far away. I mean, the San Francisco somewhere there, because the teachers from Russia or from mm -hmm. closest from Europe they can come easier uh, mm -hmm. because the flights it's not so much expensive. But I'm trying to don't be like okay, this is the main teacher. This is not so much good teachers. No, no, no. I'm trying to make the teachers the teachers. They they have something important to give us, mm -hmm. and I really respect all the teachers which we have uh, mm -hmm. in our festival. And my goal in in our festivals, I think it's education. It's something new to know something or inspired by these teachers mm -hmm. and the teaching program i mean the educational program on this festival it's much more important than show or something mm -hmm. also the show is also i like it so much and it's amazing but it's kind of still uh the dancers who come to our country they try to show their best so mm -hmm. that's what i like too uh but Last year we tried first time to make the dance theater with the topic and with the different roles mm -hmm. and to make it, you know, the combination like unusual thing uh, for shows and it was with my production. I think I found the music for everyone. Okay, I need you with dancing with this music. But of course it's much harder and takes more time and energy for that. Uh, of course it's easy to just, okay, yes, perform, but yeah, I think I love both. Mm -hmm. But main goal is education, teaching, and have amazing dancers in our country to share their knowledges for us. Because mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, it's really, uh, for now, with the currency different, it's hard every year to travel for the dancers mm -hmm. somewhere. Even if it will be San Francisco, it will be crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. can, they can spend like five thousand dollars, so it's mm. really expensive. So it's better to welcome them to our country. Yeah. Like, okay, you can study. In it's amazing thing that was the goal. Just make the teachers close to us, mm -hmm. and of course we love hugs. I think we hugging each other all the time and kind of friends meeting and we have our community and tribal pro meeting each other only during festivals that's why it's our kind of family time <laughs> so like oh i'm so glad to see you <laughs> all this thing it's so important because without this atmosphere mm -hmm. festival i think never happened atmosphere mm -hmm. it's one of the important things like you said mm -hmm. like maybe just enjoying and taking the sauna and do some mm -hmm. drinks so it's it's really amazing thing mm -hmm. so it is for certain level of dancers or can beginners come can advanced dancers come do you have like different levels of classes yes we have different level classes i really sometimes when beginners asking can i join i say to them okay this one will be good for you this one maybe you need to drill more and practice more because it's kind of advanced level class of course we suggest different but usually we have um kind of program like mm -hmm. not work intensives where mm -hmm. you can start from the really really beginner level and you can go out after this intensive with mm -hmm. really high level okay. so you can increase your level during the workshops and festivals mm -hmm. so everyone can join mm -hmm. but ask me i recommend <laughs> what it will be super best for you because we have different options yeah i think with festivals it's uh, in general that uh, the level is not 
zero because when you go to a festival workshop it's meant to be intensive it's meant to be that you go and you get with a short amount of time you get a lot of knowledge so it's not meant that after the class you feel like you you can do all of it then probably it was too easy for you so i think also when beginners go take classes it's okay to feel uncomfortable and not familiar with all the steps you know it takes time it's more like seeing accepting and then i go home and i practice it you know yeah. so yeah. Uh, if uh, now somebody wants to come to kazakhstan to your festival from europe i think most people would say oh it's so far i don't want to go there you know <laughs> but actually if you check from maps from the bird's eye it's the same as estonia from spain and it that that doesn't sound that far you know so how do europeans can come to your festival how does the how does the trip go oh i think uh we have a lot of participants for next festival mm -hmm. and uh like from lithuania one from estonia and yeah different countries too one from spain so it's not so difficult because the flights and uh, after 2020, when crisis will stop, I hope everything will recover. And yes, it's really easy to go. And you have many options to go with Lufthansa or any flight to come to Kazakhstan. And yes, it looks a little bit far away. Mm -hmm. uh, but important thing when in Kazakhstan is super cheap for travel because the currency is changing for us. It's start to be in Europe much more expensive. Mm -hmm. But for you, it's like, amazing to travel and you the prices is super low there mm -hmm. and you can go to restaurant and eat every delicious food there it's maybe because asian country and mm -hmm. nomad country maybe we don't have so many history buildings mm -hmm. but kind of nomads they don't have a houses regular house they lived in Burtas. it's shadowing on their culture you can mm -hmm. see this in real and we have different cities to visit and really recommend to visit not on the capital i recommend to go to nur sultan the capital or almaty with the mountains mm -hmm. an amazing view just trust me i love this city view and so many things to do because it's so contrasted for european to see asian mm -hmm. culture where I was born and I was grown and but I think that's amazing we speak in Russia and the, the important thing I saw in Estonia because we all lived in Soviet Union before mm -hmm. and when I go in the center maybe somewhere there in Tallinn I saw the same kindergartens buildings the mm -hmm. same sometimes five floors buildings like we have yeah. <laughs> and I was grown from this kind of kindergarten like mm -hmm. um, this uh, shape like oh my god we are living far away from us but we have the same buildings because of so <laughs> so i think you will feel sometimes really close mm -hmm. to us because we all was in this situation and everyone growing and mm -hmm. you know the same building thing so it's so cool yeah so there's a lot to see in uh, kazakhstan if you go take part of the festival so uh it is in the capital, the festival, or? We have two festivals. One, the main important tribal mm -hmm. KZ, uh, happening in the middle, in the center of Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. is Sultan. Uh, but we have second one kind of birthday festival because mm -hmm. last year we have 10 years of our tribal program. Congratulations. Uh, happening in Almaty, yeah, happening in Almaty with a mountain. Okay. So Almaty on the south and the capital in the middle. Mm -hmm. We have another cities, but I think that most important cities like ex capital and capital. <laughs> so <laughs> the capitals we have, and we travel in between it. Mm -hmm. So the festival, uh, the classes are in English or Russian or both? Uh, in, because we have a lot of foreigners, uh, mm -hmm. we our teachers usually speak in English, but we mm -hmm. have translator for Russian English and English Russian too. Okay. In Kazakhstan everyone knows Russian, if you're Russian speaker, so be welcome mm -hmm. to just go there. But uh, the uh, government language is Kazakh, mm -hmm. so everybody knows Kazakh too. Okay. Uh, but Russian everybody knows too. Kazakh and Russian the same. Okay, okay. So if we go from your work now to your home 
You are actually a mother of a little girl. Uh, do you have any advice or how was your experience having a baby during your performances and giving classes in general as a dance artist? How was this, this experience for you? Uh, I love my pregnancy. It was super easy. Uh, recovering takes the time. I mean, I don't have any problems with, during the pregnancy, but the pregnant, the childbirth was not so easy. And I recovered my body during, I think, one year to come back mm -hmm. to my weight. And uh, when you have, when you never was a mom, you never think about your food, your nutrition. And after childbirth, and also start to be mm -hmm. more popular to know about everything about nutrition mm -hmm. and what food is best, what food is not so good for your body. And now I start to develop all these things. And mm -hmm. yes, I'm trying to be like I like not like perfect shape or I like different body shapes but I'm trying to be in my harmony like okay I'm here I'm in my body I love it that's cool but it takes long time mm -hmm. especially in psychology part mm -hmm. and the one important advice for all mothers and to read a lot about kids psychology different age Mm -hmm. I mean, from no kids, not only what you need to eat, what the kids need mm -hmm. to, I don't know, to do something or the games. I'm starting to know from the new part, the psychology of how, what's happened with us when we grow mm -hmm. the kids, because we are grown and parents didn't teach us how to be parents. We just grown <laughs> and just go in their life, in our mm -hmm. own life. And I start to learn a lot about that. And of course it changed my life here in mental too. And yeah, because I read a lot of books about food, but not so much about psychology. And when I start to learn this part, I have amazing relationships with my daughter. Amazing, I think so. <laughs> and I'm trying to have amazing relationships with my husband too, which is also so hard, I mean, to keep this because we are 15 years together so yeah almost 15 it will be this mm -hmm. year so it's new part of our life together too so mm -hmm. learn not only about kids learn no more psychology about mm -hmm. your family husband and everything mm -hmm. so uh, i think the question that everybody asks when a dancer has a baby we we ask that uh, when she's going to dance or is she already dancing <laughs> Yes, she's dancing, but she's doing gymnastics here, amazing group, and they are so inspiring me because when I'm looking at these small kids, they're working hard, so much hard. And when I'm uh, there, another, like, uh, not teenager, maybe teenager group of juniors coming, like, the next class, and I'm looking at these girls, you know, tall and nice and with a bun here. And, you know, you see the okay, gymnastic girl. And I'm so inspired. They look so pretty. I mean, not so pretty. They look uh, that they hard work in this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, how to say it. They inspired me how to maybe not work hard, how to love what you want, or what mm -hmm. you do, how to love the thing what you do. And this kind of sport, it's not just dancing for fun, that the sport, you need more attention, more be focusing. Mm -hmm. And for now we are doing, because of uh, this 2002, <laughs> 2020 20. years, during coronavirus, we do an mm -hmm. online classes with our gymnastic uh, mm -hmm. uh, studio and they still keep going mm -hmm. and they still working with them and they still working even if it, it will be on the screen mm -hmm. the kids still keep going mm -hmm. it's so inspiring me yes they're not lazy they're not <laughs> yeah it's very important for a kid to have uh, of course first of all during the lockdown that they can move that they they keep themselves moving because otherwise later it's very hard to go back to the dance class because you're all stiff you know and yeah. also for little girls it's important to have how to say the the way you stand already or the way you walk it's yeah. something that you get from your childhood like that's why i also agree that it's important for little girls and of, of course boys too to have some kind of dance class when they are young so they in the future when they grow up even though if they don't keep dancing their uh, posture is uh, is very 
presentable. That's it. Presentable, I, yes, and it's really connected with your uh, presentation and orator mm -hmm. skills when you're speaking, your posture, it's so much connected mm -hmm. with psychology too. That kind of part I'm also learning with the dancing, mm -hmm. how dancing reacts in our mind and our psychology mm -hmm. and how to unblock ourselves. So I think that goes and blocks <laughs> in the future already. <laughs> yes. Sometimes she lazy like, oh, I don't want to do that class. I mean, it looks so cute. I'm like, no, we can go and, you know, be more scheduled and to keep discipline it's mm -hmm. also the big big uh, goal for every kid just to go somewhere and to try something not only dancing and i have she started to belly dance herself in when she watched me but she not so much uh dancing with me she mm -hmm. was twice maybe on the festivals i was mm -hmm. with her because i have nobody to take mm -hmm. care about her and i take her with me and yeah, it was cool. I performed, and uh, this video you also saw the uh, past uh, the ghost the ghost uh, dance. Mm -hmm. And she was on the backstage, and the girls just looking at her. She was a laptop, of course, and it saved my life a lot. And sometimes she doing ballet dancing, but more intuitive way. She not trying to be mm -hmm. someone but i think maybe one year or two years after i will get her for new classes not only gymnastic just to go maybe some contemporary modern or something mm -hmm. for food because gymnastic it's more about discipline and struggle mm -hmm. and to make your body shape prepared mm -hmm. for everything but it's really important to important to have kind of improvisation skill mm -hmm. too what mm -hmm. you do and actually at home yeah oh, okay so yeah i guess with the gymnastics she gets the discipline and with other styles she can get the more artistic side maybe yeah yeah so that's getting a lot of body uh discovery and body mm -hmm. gymnastic one of the hardest thing i saw <laughs> because you need to do the splits like that it's really cool <laughs> have you done a class with her the gymnastics class oh my no uh with, i'm not teaching her only if, no, I can't do that. I know some <laughs> basic stuff, but when I did my gymnastic, and I'm not professional gymnastic, I did kind of mm -hmm. choreography classes with standard uh, the bridge, the splits. Mm -hmm. I can do that, but now it's different teaching, and now mm -hmm. it's so many years past, and I saw that how many, how really different the teaching of gymnastic and mm -hmm. how the level is grown. Mm -hmm. Amazing! That's really high level of teaching right now. Mm -hmm. For okay. that kind of, not that sport, yes. Yeah, sport more. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not teaching for my girl, I don't know. I'm not feeling that I can do that. I want, I'm trying to be mom. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I love her. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you can be lazy today, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. That's how people work. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, do you have anything else to advice or something for Estonian dancer you would like to say or maybe some suggestion where where we can find your dance classes or or maybe you start teaching soon in Estonia too somewhere in a studio not online <laughs> uh, I'm trying to I'm still working so in this house in the garage floor I'm trying to build uh, the studio mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think but we are far away from the Tallinn and because mm -hmm. of traveling it's impossible to make like regular regular classes mm -hmm. like every Tuesday and Thursday uh, uh, when we come back to normal life of the crisis I think maybe I will open something in them I'm not sure Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I'm really sure that I opened red treats in my house. Mm -hmm. uh, like one week of deep, deep going into the uh, body physics, uh, improving mm -hmm. and how to stretch ourselves with different parts. I mean, not only about the splits, it's important to stretch and come back to feeling our spine and core and mm -hmm. how to dancing, how to get inspiration from the forest, how to see the costumes. So kind of this big retreat all about mm -hmm. dancing and maybe with performance because on our beach spark, we have uh, the stage, the small stage mm -hmm. on the, <laughs> with the sea view. It's amazing here, I found wow. this place, I was so happy. Or maybe here in our backyard, I don't know. And that's what I'm planning and I'm sure I will do that in Estonia. Um, and um, I am still think 
keep going to do my online classes mm -hmm. because everybody wants and last weekend it was the girl from Iran, from yeah. Mozambique, from South Africa, uh, Australia it's okay but you know these countries for me it's mm -hmm. like really? <laughs> like okay and I think I will uh, keep going this thing too because mm -hmm. Not so much dancers can come to Estonia too, so mm -hmm. I will try to continue that. And what else? I really love to make uh, come back. I really would like to come back to the festivals in real because it's different mm -hmm. feelings. Of course, the energy and to hug everyone, to hug <laughs> you in real. Yeah. <laughs> yes, finally, I hope yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is different to have uh, people physically in front of you. You can touch them, you can move them. Let's hope that things go back fast. But of course, the online classes are good for having the possibility for dancers all over the world. Wherever you are, whatever time zone you are, you can still go and take part of the class without leaving your house. It's, yeah. it's the magic of 21st century, I can say. <laughs> I agree, and I also found that I can see a little bit different angle to watch mm -hmm. uh, during the class on my students and like, okay, but I can find something more that I maybe didn't found on real. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can look them, but you know, this uh, 3D format, then you can <laughs> watch 360, but on the screen you can watch, you know, in real like 2D, mm -hmm. you can see some details, maybe lines, maybe techniques thing, and mm -hmm. it's different. I think that it should be someday, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe we have more technologies to go through and, you know, <laughs> have virtual this, uh, reality. You know, yes. <laughs> but I think it also can work and I think it also can help to dancers mm -hmm. to feel, to study more, to feel themselves uh, much better and you know, I think that kind of thing. Uh, and also I'm really a big fan of the just drilling, uh, mm -hmm workshops and classes because it's so much important to not only to use, know something new, it's really mm -hmm. important to just keep going. With that advice mm -hmm. I will say to everyone, just keep going to dancing because uh, to make our body everything for any kind of dance, for mm -hmm. any kind of movement, so even if you want to do, I don't mean the splits and do shimmy, no? <laughs> I mean the body shapes and layering, coordination, musicality, emotionals, mm -hmm. and it's really important to just keep going to drill it every mm -hmm. every day, maybe. Two, three times per week as usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not about... What I've also noticed right now is a lot of uh, teachers give uh, choreography classes rather than doing technique and doing the basic that you have already learned, but you need to keep it going with somebody. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree with you that it's important to keep the technique also going all the time. Even if you already know it, you just need to do it over and over again. So I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. Or maybe open new sides and the same things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like mm -hmm. Elizabeth said that the people change, our body change, the movements can change for you. So you need to be up, up to the date all the time discovering your body and how it reacts to some movements. So, Absolutely agree with her. <laughs> so thank you so much Olga for joining us. It was nice to see you. Nice that you are here in Estonia now and I can't wait for you to start also with the retreats. I think it's very uh, something special here for us. So thank you so much for being here and if some some of you want to check her videos uh, from YouTube, search Olga Meos or Tribal Pro, you can find hundreds or maybe even thousands of videos. And <laughs> she has classes there and also in Instagram she has some beautiful photos and she's doing online classes so make sure you find her out. Thank, Thank you, you Olga. So Thank you so much for the invitation and we spent a really good time to talk with her, <laughs> talk with you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Estonia is really cool and nice. I hope I will stay here forever. But who knows? We hope, we hope you stay here. <laughs>